Hello. Okay, we have audience. Three people already joined. Four. Good. Okay, so just a second. Hmm. Happy New Year, sir. <coughs> best wishes to you same to you sir and your family take care have a great year ahead happy new year to everyone Okay, so I think uh, we are ready to begin. Vijay Raman. What was there to know? Okay, anyways. So, today we are going to talk about uh, how to predict a specific event from our astrological chart okay uh, like uh, if you have a chart and if you if you get a person uh, who wants to know that uh, when a particular event is going to happen how we can predict it so today we will try to uh, understand it okay so there are three steps okay first step is always the chart itself okay what i mean by that is that the chart itself should allow the event okay then uh, the first step is uh, chart itself then uh, the second step is the houses and planets that are activating that event okay we will discuss uh, detailed examples but uh, second step is uh, the houses and planets that are in uh, activating the possibility of that event and when the person is going to uh, run those dashas Okay, that is the second step and the third step is uh, the transits transit should also impact the same houses and same planets as uh, dasha is activating uh, those houses and planets okay let's start with the basic example example of everyone's concern relationship okay relationship uh, if someone asks you okay if someone comes with his chart and he, he asks you what are the possibilities of relationship or when he can be in relationship again i am only talking about relationship aspect of life uh, marriage is more a social institution so lots of social criteria are involved in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, co converting a relationship into marriage okay uh, we are only talking about uh, relationship aspect okay so th the thing is uh, first of all look at the chart itself first step is chart itself chart itself should allow a relationship okay that's the basic thing that if chart is not allowing a relationship then person should not get married okay this is the thing he can get married because uh, so, uh, social structure is that uh, they will force you to marry anyhow 
okay but the life will be hell after that so if chart is not uh, allowing the relationship person should not get into relationship because that is not what uh, what he is supposed to do in this life he is supposed to go uh, go towards other uh, avenues of life okay so uh, how to know if uh, if chart is allowing a relationship or not denial of relationship is mostly seen when pap uh, kartri yoga is happening in the 7th house okay pap kartri yoga is when two strong malefics <coughs> two strong malefics are uh, surrounding a house or a planet okay so if sixth house has a uh, has a malefic planet if eighth house has a malefic planet seventh house has uh, pap kartri yoga as seventh house is a house of relationship it shows the person's uh, uh, person's ability to deal in relationship matters is very reduced he has very reduced benefits from relationship ideally he should not get into relationship that is uh, that is the chart of denial of relationship okay so this is the first thing first of all we need to see the chart itself should have possibility of relationship there should not be uh, this uh, pap kartri yoga like thing another thing which can be very troublesome for relationship when uh this seventh lord is going eight places away from itself okay especially if it is a malefic planet uh, suppose someone is uh, taurus ascendant seventh lord is mars mars is going eight places away in the second house in gemini here mars is not only going eight places away activating the eighth house of energy of death and rebirth but it is also going in enemy sign okay likewise uh, for a cancer ascendant seventh lord going into the second house again saturn is uh, saturn is in leo sign it is again going eight places away and uh, it is uh, it is in enemy sign so this also shows uh, difficulty in relationship difficulty in sustaining a relationship so first of all we should not uh, we should not get into the uh, we should not get into relationship when the chart itself is not promising a relationship because it will be hell for both the persons okay so uh, first of all uh, we need to see the possibility of relationship in a chart okay so for uh, seeing possibility we can see 5th house 7th house 8th house 11th house these are the houses of relationship jupiter venus dharakaraka okay these houses lords also means 5th lord 7th lord 8th lord 11th lord these houses lord uh, these houses uh, 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 means uh, venus jupiter as i said plus uh, your dharakaraka okay so these are uh, important planets and houses for getting into relationship fifth house is when like you start meeting someone it is uh, the house of dating and all okay seventh house is committed relationship eighth house is your relationship benefits eleventh house is your manifestation of desire so these are important houses for relationship second uh, people also consider second house because it is the house of family we can consider it so these houses are important these house lords are important okay then jupiter venus are important because they are karka of uh, relationship and finally dhara karka is important because it is also significator of spouse or partner in your uh, chart okay so now we uh, got the houses house lords and the planets which are important for relationship now we need to see this is the first step done okay we have seen that person has uh, has possibility of relationship there is no denial of relationship if there is a denial of relationship stop here only don't go further okay things ended we should not even think about uh, getting into the timing because no matter in which time he is getting married he will have a, a difficulty in life 
so first thing uh, find out uh, if there is a denial or not okay if there is a denial don't go further <laughs> no matter how cruel or ruthless it is looking but it is the case okay so uh, follow this if you want a peaceful life for the person and uh, his partner follow this okay then this uh, so uh, we got uh, we realized okay fine then there is a possibility of relationship and these houses and these planets are uh, activating the possibility of relationship fine now look at the dasha which is uh, activating uh, activating the uh, these houses and these planets okay so whenever person is under fifth uh, fifth house dasha seventh house dasha eleventh house dasha eighth house dasha or uh, jupiter dasha venus dasha dhara dhara karaka dasha relationship can come in life in during that dasha period okay suppose like uh, if i give you an example suppose someone has uh, uh, like uh, a cancer ascendant person sun is rules uh, sun rules uh, the person's uh, second house and sits into the seventh house in capricorn so even though sun is a malefic planet it is sitting in the enemy sign but still sun mahadasha can bring a relationship okay how bad or good that will be up to the dignity of other planets also and overall chart but it will bring relationship it is not a denial case okay so we need to see when the dashas are activating these houses and these planets and uh, that will bring a relationship in their uh, their uh, life if uh, uh, chart has no denial of relationship okay this thing i will repeat again and again all these conditions apply if the chart has no denial of relationship okay so uh, the Uh, uh like uh, if person is under 5th house uh, dasha 7th house dasha 8th house dasha or 11th house dasha jupiter dasha venus dasha dhara karaka dasha then person can attract a relationship in life again relationship marriage social institution social criteria as will apply then okay uh, we found the dasha that okay the, uh, this uh, two year time period the, uh, this person is going through jupiter saturn dasha and these are relationship oriented planets and uh, so this in this two year time this person can get into relationship fine now look at the transits transits of the same planets most uh, first of all we need to look at the transits of the dasha planets so in this case we need to see the transits of jupiter saturn and then other transits also when majority of transits are also impacting fifth house seventh house eighth house or eleventh house jupiter venus dhara karaka then we can say okay there is a potential chance of this person getting into relationship okay so uh, three steps are there first of all look at the chart itself it should have possibility of relationship then look at the houses and planets which are showing that possibility of relationship and when those houses are getting or planets are getting activated as per the dasha and then finally go into this uh, this thing of uh, transits and transits of planets should also impact the same houses or same planets which we have seen in the dasha okay then we can see uh, we can say okay there is a potential chance of this person getting into relationship again how that relationship will be good bad ugly it depends upon the pers- uh, both persons chart uh, both persons who are in relationship their chart and uh, their dashas okay then we uh, we can say okay fine in this uh, uh, the, in this time period they can have a good time in relationship in this time period they can have some uh, some challenges in their relationship okay so this is uh, this is the thing with uh, relationship uh, this is one one type of prediction now same rule applies for every uh, every per, uh, 
uh, every type of predictions okay like uh, if you want to know uh, when you are going to buy a property okay look at the property first of all look at the possibility of property in your chart the uh, the the possibility that you can have a property <coughs> so if there is uh, there is no possibility again if ketu is in the fourth house okay fourth house is the main house of real estate matters ketu is there ketu is separation so <laughs> this person should not buy a property on his own name an individual property on his own name if they can buy property on joint name or in like apartment system then it is fine but in an individual property should not be there in their own name otherwise they will not be able to reap the benefits of staying in it if they were just want to buy for investment purposes they can buy but uh, if they want to live in that property they should not buy on their own name they should buy in joint name with other family members or in the name of other family members okay so this is the uh, the first thing uh, in this property related ex uh, example so first of all again we need to see if uh, the chart overall is promising the possibility of having a property okay now we uh, the main houses are fourth house seventh house because it is fourth from the fourth so it becomes bhavat bhavam of fourth house mars is important because mars uh, mars uh, uh, represents real estate matters uh, then your matra karaka planet with the fourth highest degree that is also important when it comes to property related matters and fourth and seventh lord also so what are the important houses for uh, property related matters fourth house fourth lord seventh house seventh lord mars and uh, your matra karaka planet with the fourth highest degree so when uh, now again we got these houses and these planets which are important for real estate property again go into the dasha look at the time period when uh, when the, this planet is uh, going towards uh, going towards the dasha which is going to activate these houses or these planets means fourth house fourth lord seventh house seventh lord mars uh, and uh, uh, matra karaka any of them not all of them all of them means uh, very potential chance <laughs> but any of them means there there will be an opportunity there will uh, there will be an opportunity coming for uh, buying a property or something like that so uh, look at the dashas which are activating these houses and these planets okay then look at the transits of that dasha period okay suppose you found out that person is going for a mars antar dasha for uh, for about one and half year time period one year time period okay so now look at the transits of uh, of that one year it should also uh, impact mars fourth house fourth lord uh, seventh house seventh lord or your uh, matra karaka okay so these are important uh, important points where uh, where we uh, we can find out okay there is a possibility there are other things also like in property matters uh, 3rd and 11th house also become important especially when uh, in a uh, in a case where <coughs> where you are buying a pro uh, where you are selling a property at the same time you are buying it like uh, if i sell a property and i utilize the same money in buying a property somewhere else in that case third house and 11th house also become important okay so uh, again individual cases we have to take uh, charts individually but when it comes to like your uh, uh, basic principles basic rules we need to follow these are the rules the there are three steps always for any prediction okay the changes will come as per the request like say if someone is uh, looking for relationship we have to look at 
relationship oriented houses if someone is looking for property we have to look for uh, property related houses and planets but the steps will be these three only first of all the possibility of that event in the chart itself then the second step is the dasha which is activating that possibility and the third step is the transit okay suppose someone wants to know about uh, foreign travel so in matters of foreign travel uh, third house is important because third house is 12th from the fourth it represents leaving your homeland loss of your homeland ninth house is important because ninth house represents uh, people of different ethnicity okay and uh, 12th house is important because 12th house is the main house of foreign lands rahu is important because rahu is karaka of foreign things so uh, we need to see third house third lord ninth house ninth lord 12th house 12th lord rahu okay these are the important houses and planets now look at the dasha when they uh, dasha is activating any of these houses and any of these planets then look at the transits again the third step that uh, uh, transits are also impacting these houses third house ninth house twelfth house or rahu okay so uh, by this way uh, when like uh, all three steps are uh, uh, giving a yes answer that chart is allowing the event dasha is there and transit is also there there is a potential possibility of that event to occur when dasha is there transit is not there it shows that uh, uh, like opportunity may come but person may not be able to uh, able to uh, grab that opportunity or take advantage of opportunity okay if dasha is not there transit is there big possibility is that the event will never happen okay then there will be like a thought kind of thing okay let me uh, let me uh, find out the possibility or uh, and uh, event possibility may not uh, ever come they may plan for it but they may just uh, drop it okay so th these three uh, three steps are always important for any event you have to find out the houses which are important for that event then uh, uh, the house lots also important and the planets which are karka of that event like in uh, in first example of relationship we have seen jupiter venus and uh, dhara karaka they are karakas of relationship in second example of real uh, real estate we have seen mars as karaka of real estate in the third example of foreign lands we have seen uh, uh, rahu uh, rahu as karaka of real estate uh, sorry uh, for foreign lands suppose someone is looking for childbirth okay this this can be like uh, very uh, confusing also uh, for childbirth take it as if uh, not the first child okay i understand uh, fifth house is, uh, represents your first child okay let's uh, let's understand the basics first fifth, uh, fifth house represents first child Seventh house represents second child. Ninth house represents third child. Likewise, we need to go uh, uh, in alternate houses. Okay, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, first. Uh, these are the number of ch uh, children you may have. Okay, but understand, it is uh, first pregnancy actually. Fifth house is your first pregnancy. it is not your first child why i am saying so is that uh, it can happen that a person may conceive a child and that child may have a miscarriage okay that child may be uh, like uh, the person may go through a miscarriage kind of situation unfortunate event but uh, even that happens so if that person conceives again 
second cha, uh, second time that is seventh house that is her second child not first child because first child uh, resulted in a miscarriage okay that's where we need to pay attention that uh, if someone is coming for uh, for you for your uh, for their second child birth okay you cannot directly jump into the seventh house you need to confirm with them if they had any uh, any event like a miscarriage or uh, like abortion in in, uh, in any of the past pregnancies so that uh, that has to be taken into account okay so this is uh, this is important so if, uh, fifth house will always be important because fifth house represents uterus area of the body so no matter which uh, which child you are planning second third uh, seventh eighth but uh, fifth house is always important because fifth house represents uterus okay so fifth house will always be considered fifth house and fifth lord uh, this uh, uh, if someone let's say if someone is looking for the third pregnancy then ninth house and ninth lord jupiter is karaka of uh, uh, children and sun and moon are uh, uh, sun and moon are planets of parenting okay so these uh, houses these house lords jupiter sun and moon we need to consider okay again the rule is same that we need to first see if there is a possibility of uh, childbirth in the ch uh, chart itself if there is no possibility if there is a denial like pap kartri yoga and all then we need not to predict again it looks cruel but it is the case then uh, it is uh, the that uh, uh, if possibility is there then see the dashas which are activating fifth house in this case uh, they are looking for the third child ninth house and jupiter sun and moon okay this is uh, this uh, this is the second step done and now go into the transits and look at the same houses if uh, transits are also impacting same houses and same planets then it is a potential chance of conceiving a child and that child is also like uh, getting safely delivered okay and no uh, no uh, major chance of uh, miscarriage or abortion is there okay this is the way so uh, these are important uh, points uh, these three steps are always there in every uh, in every event whichever event we want to uh, we want to see uh, we want to predict uh, first we have to see the possibility of event in the chart okay like uh, uh, as i said relationship if the relationship possibility itself is not there in the chart person will go through the uh, go through the dasha of jupiter venus or seventh house but they will get other results of jupiter venus and seventh house relationship oriented results will never come because the basic possibility of relationship is not there okay so this is the uh, this is important and this is we uh, this we need to always remember first is the possibility of the, that event that particular event because we all are meant for different things okay understand everyone is not meant to have properties everyone is not meant to have uh, relationship we all are supposed to do different jobs in this uh, this world in this life okay so that's why everyone has a uh, uh, some potential in the chart uh, uh, regarding uh, regarding where they should be uh, exhibiting their energy not uh, everyone sh uh, is not supposed to live the same life style okay so the first step is always the uh, the possibility in the chart then second step is always uh, this uh, uh this uh, uh the dasha which allows that houses and planets uh which which br can bring the event 
and then the transit transit should also impact the same houses and same planets uh, if uh, like uh, just to complete the last uh, last uh, example of childbirth if someone is looking for adopting a child okay then it is uh, uh, then in saturn becomes important saturn represents your uh, uh, step a step relationship or adopted children also okay uh, then uh, uh, nakshatras like pushya becomes important in our adoption okay uh, if someone is looking for surrogacy or ivf and all rahu ketu become important so we need to consider uh, rahu ketu in that case so we uh, we should know uh, what is the event which is which person is looking for we should know the specifics okay like the, this one if someone is looking for adopting a child we have to consider saturn rather uh, along with jupiter jupiter is still the children but saturn represents step children or adopted children okay so these are the things which we which we need to uh, uh, consider okay uh, so these are the uh, basic rules the the these three uh, three are the basic rules yeah, i have uh, given the link of uh, one article of donald trump okay and uh, in that article i like uh, predicted sometime around uh, january february last year january february 2020 Uh, that uh, he will have uh, some down time and uh, low time and uh, if you remember in that time period he was uh, he was approved for impeachment okay so the, all these events were uh, uh, all these steps were uh, discussed there in that article and that will be helpful for us again steps are three uh, first the possibility in the chart second when the possibility is getting activated as per the dasha and if transits are also uh, uh, impacting the same houses and planets okay okay let's see if there are questions namaste happy new year sir happy new year namaste 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 happy new year sir how the eighth house is benefit of relationship we are cons- uh, we consider the eighth house is malefic uh, so if eighth house dasha goes then it should impact it badly eighth house shows sudden changes uh, first house is you okay and uh, sec- uh, second house is your wealth okay first house is you Se- second house is your wealth seventh house is your marriage or relationship eighth house is second from the seventh so it represents wealth of relationship or benefits of relationship okay so second from any house is uh, benefit of that particular house so eighth house is second from the seventh so it represents benefit from your relationship it is also house of business benefits because seventh house is business and eighth house is business benefits so if you are looking for some uh, if someone will sustain a business okay anyone can start a business but if someone can sustain a business then eighth house is uh, important okay eighth house uh, should be seen because that shows uh, person is uh, uh, person uh, is going to start the business he will have good benefits out of business and he will be able to sustain that business over a long period of time Uh, some tax man- mentions a uh, ninth house as as the first pregnancy for a female chi- female chart. Please, can you throw some light on this for childbirth event for male and female charts? As I see, uh, fifth house. Uh, first of all, uh, females chart should be considered for childbirth related event 
because uh, she is supposed to uh, conceive bear and deliver the child okay so that is uh, that is first thing we should consider uh, a female child okay fifth house is uh, is first child traditionally and i have also found fifth house is important uh, in my consultations also that fifth house has given the result of first child ninth house becomes bhavat bhavam of fifth house that's why ninth house has its own importance okay i am not saying ninth house is not important i am only saying that uh, ninth house is bhavat bhavam of fifth house that's why ninth house becomes important for child birth okay in case of uh, if you are looking for a male chart okay in in a male chart uh, like uh, if we just uh, improve the language if we are looking for the <coughs> <coughs> to be mother's chart okay then fifth house is important if we are looking at to be father's chart then sixth uh, sorry second house is important okay that's what i found that uh, when the when the lady is uh, having the child birth actually the second house is getting activated for the male okay because uh, second house is the house of family she is having child he is having someone uh, someone additional member in family okay this uh, this becomes important so uh, in male chart i have seen that second house becomes prominent uh, at the child uh, time of child birth in females chart uh, it is fifth house important uh fifth house is always important as i said that uh, it represents uterus area of the body so no matter which number of child they are planning the uh, fifth house should always be considered okay does pap kartri yoga needs to be considered during transit also yes we can consider but that uh, like uh, right now if uh, we see saturn and ketu ketu is in scorpio saturn is in uh, 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 capricorn and they both are surrounding uh, uh, this uh, sagittarius sign okay so uh, wherever uh, person uh, people have their sagittarius sign there will be kind of uh, uh, restricted or very limited results of that house a very limited benefits of that house okay so uh, in the, this time period in this one and half year time period we have to consider this papkartri yoga for our predictions what happens if uh, retrograde venus in revati nakshatra in fifth house jupiter saturn conjunction in the seventh house uh, okay and saturn is dharakarka for scorpio sign mm saturn is there in 7th house it is spoiling the show right so in any case whenever saturn is involved with relationship matters uh, it is uh, a very cold and dry sort of relationship they may uh, they may uh, attract people uh, in their relationship matters who are very cold uh, they are not emotionally very uh, uh, very uh, attached and all okay uh, so saturn in the 7th house is always difficult uh, this person can have difficulties so it is better for them to marry some uh, somewhere in their uh, marry someone uh, somewhere in their 30s okay Uh, at the same time saturn represents practicality so if they uh, they are practical they are uh, uh, like uh, uh, realistic in their uh, relationship approach then things can be better uh, saturn in the 6th house mars moon in the 7th house uh, sun in the 8th house for virgo ascendant is it under papkartri yoga 7th uh, lord jupiter in the 2nd house saturn saturn in the 6th house mars moon in the 7th yes i will consider 
especially for relationship matters i will consider sun as uh, uh, sun as malefic planet and causing the pap karthi yoga uh, uh, seventh house moon and mars all are under uh, pap karthi yoga in this chart what is the role of 11th and 10th house in foreign residence okay if malefic ketu is placed in the 12th house its lord is uh, placed in uh, placed in 11th house and uh, with 11 uh, as well as lagna and 8th lord for tula okay <laughs> just a second i i have to understand it uh, for for tula lagna okay does it support foreign residents many believe that 10th lord needs to be seen for foreign residents uh, and malefic plans like ketu in 12th can cause uh, problems in getting visa okay so okay so first of all what is the role of 11th and 10th house in foreign residents Eleventh house. Uh, let's first understand. Eleventh house is eighth from the fourth. Okay, if you start counting from fourth house and reach eleventh house, it is eighth from the fourth. Okay, eighth house is the, always the house of death and rebirth. Okay, so when eleventh house is eighth from the fourth, it shows uh, that whenever person is eleventh house dasha. they can have death of benefits of their homeland they can go away from homeland and they will have death of benefits of their homeland that's it fourth house is your homeland okay now we are coming to the logic behind 10th house why people may be considering it as a house uh, which can bring foreign travels uh, or foreign residents uh i don't consider i i never consider 10th house as the house for uh, uh foreign uh, foreign residents or something like that but maybe this is the logic okay fourth house is your homeland 10th house represents people away from your homeland outside your homeland okay fourth uh, fourth house is where your homeland is uh, belonging to now if you go opposite to it in the 10th house it is uh, people who belong to opposite of your homeland means foreign lands okay this may be the logic why they are considering 10th house as uh, as place uh, places away from your homeland or opposite to your homeland okay now ketu uh, ketu in 12th house uh as i see ketu and 12th house energy is very much uh, very much uh, like uh, aligned with each other ketu normally finds most peace when it is in pisces sign 12th sign so ketu in 12th house is not a bad position okay uh, what i saw in my experience uh, with people uh, who have ketu in the uh, in the 12th house is that uh, they go to foreign lands they can stay but there is no extreme desire that they need to be in foreign lands okay it is not that they are dying for uh, to go towards foreign lands that is where the contentment of ketu is that uh, if it happens then then fine if it doesn't happen then also it is fine okay so uh, ketu normally separates you from the house where it, uh, it sits so uh, separation can be seen in uh, in this matter that uh, person is not even inclined okay they are, they are not uh, running after it okay if uh, uh, but uh, it can uh, like you said ketu in the uh, 12th house as it remains a malefic planet they can have one or the other issue not necessarily visa issue uh, but one or the other issue in foreign lands ketu can bring some uh, malefic results in foreign lands because it is a malefic planet okay 
like uh, in one case i have seen that person has gone to foreign lands and uh, uh, they had some litigation not because of uh, visa issues but some because of some other uh, conflict they got into okay uh, there was one um, one more person he had to go to jail okay uh, because he lost his papers so uh, these type of things can happen uh, when ketu uh, being a malefic planet in the 12th house at the same time the basic desire may not be there but if they go into the uh, like uh, foreign lands uh, okay they uh, they can easily uh, equally live there it is not uh, prohibited f- uh, for them to go there okay also understand the basic thing which i wanted to say uh, foreign land is again our own creation okay universe is one <laughs> okay we created this thing as homeland and foreign land uh a uh, uh, whole earth is one countries are made by us okay so astrologically there is nothing like foreign lands astrologically only uh, it only means that unknown land where you have n- uh, never been okay first house is your place of birth understand uh, logic behind 12th house being foreign foreign lands or as we say it is for a house of foreign lands first house is your place of birth and you are going furthest away from first house in the 12th house so going furthest away from your homeland is considered as a foreign land but it is only like a, a place where you have never been okay now it can be any th- any uh, any place means if i haven't been in punjab in india so even punjab is a foreign land for me okay because it is an unknown land uh, foreign me- only means unknown okay foreign doesn't mean uk or us uh, foreign only means unknown wherever you have never been that is foreign okay just like uh, in medical terminology we use the word foreign material or foreign substance okay so this is also like uh, there also foreign means unknown here also foreign means unknown uh okay now coming to this uh, placement if malefic ketu is placed in uh, uh, 12th house uh, its lord is placed in 11th with 11th uh, okay as well as lagna sun mercury venus are together eighth lords for tula lagna uh, okay uh, does it support foreign residents yeah it will because uh, there there is a lot of energy which is going into 11th house and 12th house sun mercury venus are there in the 11th house ketu is in the 12th house so out of your uh, nine planets four planets are in these two houses i am sure other planets will also be indicating the same uh, 7 6 uh, so just a second i think uh, like uh, saturn's uh, because in this person's chart saturn rules the fourth house saturn represents limitations and the fourth house is your homeland it shows uh, very less possibilities or benefits in uh, opportunities in homeland this also makes the person go away from the homeland okay so there is a possibility for this person to be away from the homeland many believe that uh, 10th lord needs to be seen for foreign residents uh, as i said that uh, 10th house can be seen as the place Uh, opposite to your homeland that's why and malefic like ketu ca- uh, cause problems in getting visa as i said uh, uh, not necessarily only that problem uh, as it is a malefic planet it can cause uh, any other problem also like uh, people can have health issues in foreign lands people can have accidents in foreign lands the things i uh, said that uh, they got into some crime and they ended up in jail that is uh, also a uh, ketu in uh, 12th house issue okay uh, 
then uh, libra ascendant saturn in the 10th house of cancer and uh, in 7th uh, in 7th house uh, i have jupiter ketu moon in aries i lost my job can you please tell me uh, when i can get a job uh, of my liking okay there is no job of our liking sir uh, so libra ascendant 10th house saturn and i don't know your dashas i don't know uh, what dashas you are going through i'm just telling out of the transits uh, uh, jupiter will transit in aquarius in your 5th house uh, and 5th uh, house is 8th from the 10th it shows uh, some change in your work environment from april onwards when you, when you enter into uh, and enter in april uh, jupiter will come into your 5th house it can bring some opportunities of job uh, i don't think there is any job of liking and all okay uh, just that uh, uh, being a libra ascendant you are supposed to do business that's why you are uh, facing these issues uh, get into your own business that will be of your liking 10th lord sun in uh, in 4th house fine is a native away from homeland or not away from homeland or not uh, it doesn't have any connection 10th uh, lord sun in 4th house uh, it is a career oriented house is career oriented planet in the 4th house it shows that if person works from home or private office uh, uh, it has uh, he has more uh, more possibility of gaining authority and recognition he uh, this person is uh, scorpio ascendant fourth house is ruled by saturn uh, so again it shows uh, very less benefits from homeland okay this person can be anywhere now understand it uh, this is also this is also our uh, perception that uh, the chart our life is actually moving as per the chart it is moving as per the chart but chart signifies many things okay the same chart is uh, like uh, uh, what i i mean to say is that no, uh, not necessarily that you are living your life as per the best possibilities of chart okay understand uh let's take my example i was not supposed to work under uh, under anyone's authority in job setup saturn rahu in the 10th house still i worked for 10 years and uh, in job setup so uh, what i was doing i was going against the chart okay i was going against my chart so i i, I was suffering there so the possibility can be of going to foreign lands if person is not taking the advantages then what can we do okay coming to the the basic thing that uh, free will always is always there with you okay as, uh, as uh, there is a quotation of jean paul sartre uh, who says that humanity is condemned to be free okay we are condemned to be free we are uh, so free that it is like a curse so even after getting uh, hundreds of indications if someone wants to be in job setup no one can uh, prevent, uh, stop it if, even after getting hundreds of indication if someone wants to be in homeland no one can stop him okay so that is the thing chart is fine but again the free will is the most important thing if you are adamant to uh, do if i am adamant to go against my chart chart can not do anything only thing that i will suffer in my life if i just get aligned with my chart then i can live a better life that is it chart or astrology is only uh, for uh, guiding you and making you pro, uh, proactive and aware of your situations what you can do what what you should do and what you should not do we can do anything as we like uh, jupiter's aspect from 12th house 
Jupiter has three aspect. Fifth and ninth aspect is about uh, gaining knowledge. So wherever Jupiter aspects uh, uh, through its fifth and ninth aspect, uh, it is about uh, uh, gaining knowledge from those houses. So Jupiter's aspect from twelfth house goes to fourth house and eighth house. This and these are moksha triangle. So person needs to gain knowledge uh, and wisdom related to fourth house and eighth house. Okay, and Jupiter's seventh aspect is about sharing the information. Whatever we learned from uh, these two aspects of fifth aspect and ninth house aspect, um, we share that information with pe other people through our seventh uh, through Jupiter's seventh aspect. So, uh, seventh aspect is going into the sixth house so this person will share the uh, knowledge uh, with people related with the sixth house so ketu's lord is in 11th uh, with 11th lagna lord yeah uh, as i said uh, yeah saturn is debilitated in seventh this is enough indication now understand fourth lord uh, saturn is debilitated uh, there cannot be a bigger indication that this person must go out from homeland. This person has no future in the homeland. Okay. If he continues to be in homeland, he will suffer. He will suffer royally. And he has to go, and go, out for, uh, uh, go out of homeland. Okay, so now uh, again coming back to what I was saying. Now even in this uh, example, this person can uh, can decide. Okay, uh, no matter what, I will I will stay in my homeland. He can stay in his homeland. Okay, but he is only going against the chart, and he will make his own life of suffering. Nothing else. If we are just aligned with our chart, then things can be better. Okay, any further question for uh, from anyone? in cancer if getting fifth aspect from Rahu uh, from sixth house Pisces uh, kindly guide about career options uh, it is very difficult uh, moon Mars in cancer because again in career matters lots of things get involved uh, ascendant ascendant lord position uh, ascendant nakshatra ascendant nakshatra lord position uh, second house lord, uh, uh, 11th house lord, Bhrigu, Bindu, Rahu position, 10th uh, uh, house, 10th lord, okay, Atma Karka, Amatta Karka, then we can come to conclusion, okay, this person should be uh, in this, uh, in this uh, specific career, but uh, uh, seeing this uh, uh, Libra ascendant, first of all, they should be in their own business, okay. Uh, Mars, uh, Moon Mars in the 10th house where Mars is debilitated. This person will have lots of issues uh, while dealing with authority figures. Okay. So this is the thing then uh, uh, like uh, uh, maybe, maybe uh, one possibility can be of uh, medical side of career if the, this person is interested. Okay as Rahu is also in the sixth house and uh, uh, cancer also represents taking care and nourishing people maybe it is a possibility I am not giving a clear cut uh, career consultation here but uh, it is one of the possibility <coughs> Saturn in the fourth house along with Sun, Mercury, Moon should uh, be out from homeland yes as soon as <laughs> okay Saturn in the fourth house is never good for any benefit from homeland it will create stress okay so uh, as uh, 
as uh, they get chance they should uh, they should be uh, away from the homeland namaste uh, cancer ascendant rahu in the 6th house uh, saturn ketu in the 12th house uh, of uh, gemini uh, and mars in 10th house aries how is work life cancer ascendant saturn ketu in the okay uh, it, it is a very strong position of mars mars in aries in 10th house because mars is a known sign also getting dikpala okay so uh, it can uh, indicate a strong career but uh, like uh, again uh, i have to see the whole chart to uh, to tell you the Uh, right career or where the this person should be working uh, again the steps i said that uh, they are five six steps uh, ascendant ascendant lord position ascendant nakshatra its lord position second house lord 11th house lord 10th house lord rigu bindu rahu position atma karaka amatta karaka so after looking at all these things i can come to conclusion okay fine this person should be in this career before that uh, i would not comment anything that uh, how will be career and uh, career and how is work life because i don't even know if the person is following the right path in career what they are supposed to follow if they are not sup- uh, they are doing uh, what uh, uh, now ascendant lord is in the fourth house libra so uh, it shows that uh, the life path is going towards uh, serving people from your home or private offices in business setup if this person is not in business setup then he can be suffering uh, if this uh, person is business setup then it is better okay if mars is dharakarka then is uh, married life t- is having conflict or spouse nature shows anger uh, it depends upon the dignity of mars if mars is weak in uh, in chart then it can show difficulties uh, if mars is like uh, debilitated and all the partner can be controlling dominant but if mars is strong the same energy takes an uh, other shape of uh, being protective they can be protective towards their spouse okay i think we are done it's over 1 hour read it okay i think we are done uh, let me know i will wait for some time if there is any question otherwise we will close okay so okay fine i think we are done uh, take care enjoy your sunday let's meet uh, next week and we will have a another session okay take care bye okay uh, last question venus moon in 8th house in gemini ascendant and uh, saturn in 5th house uh, Uh, with uh, with rahu buddh in 6th house okay means research knowledge uh, uh, even like venus moon in 8th house is enough for making someone research oriented 8th uh, so house is the house of research moon is mind so it is a research oriented mind okay uh, so uh this uh, itself is enough for making someone research oriented and l- looking for research oriented knowledge eighth lord going into the fifth house of education is in, uh, again uh, an indication that person can be interested in research oriented knowledge uh this uh, rahu buddh coming into the sixth house is scorpio scorpio is the sign of research rahu uh, mercury coming together 
can make you extreme can make this person extremely research oriented they can be very very good at research so this is uh, this is good chart for any kind of research oriented knowledge or research oriented career nowadays i am not liking liking the people attitude surrounding my home uh, and lot of irritations are occur nowadays but want to change the our home too uh, but can't do that okay i hope things get be- can get better for you and you find so peace in near future okay take care all the best enjoy your sunday bye